Hello and welcome to TSK F1. My name's Rich and I thought I would just do a testing review because I've just done watch-alongs of all three days. It was a lot of talking, a lot of watching, a lot of opinions and I just thought I would share my final thoughts as we move towards the first race of the season next week in Bahrain. First of all, we're going to start with Red Bull and honestly, they looked faultless all, all through the three days. Max Verstappen looked strong, he looked confident, he looked fit doing all of his laps on day one. What was it, 150 plus laps on day one? Looked totally in control, like a double world champion, and Red Bull were performing like champions. They, they looked faultless, and on day three, indeed, setting the uh, fastest lap time, which I think was faster than the pole lap of last year. Let me just check that. Yes, Sergio Perez setting a time faster than the pole lap of last season, which is pretty much a big message to be sending, isn't it, if you think about it from testing. Times don't matter, we all know that, times don't matter in F1 testing, but to be already faster than the qualifying lap from last season, it's a bit of a statement for me. Red Bull looking like champions, driving like champions, faultless reliability, what more can you say, looking very strong going into the race next weekend. Ferrari also looking very, very strong. I don't think there was any particular reliability issues. Day one, there was a bit of a scare with their front wing, missing a bit of a vanity panel on the inside, and also some flexing on the wing as a whole, with them appearing with some stays towards the end plates uh, of their front wing. But other than that, Got on with their um, got on with their programs um, very very successfully, and I think there was a bit of an issue that was reported with tire degradation on long runs. And honestly, their times didn't set the world alight. But we don't know about fuel loads at all. The times I'm talking on long runs didn't you know that they weren't bad, but they weren't amazing compared to others. With uh, the times dropping off towards the end of their runs, but. We'll see next week, won't we? We've known that the Ferrari hasn't been the kindest on the tyres last season as well. Um, but Ferrari looking strong and probably the second best of the teams. But this is a bit obvious, I think, maybe. Um, both drivers looking great. We'll see next week. I don't think there's anything particular to worry about apart from maybe a little bit of tyre deg in Ferrari. So good luck to Ferrari fans. Mercedes, their, their pre-season has been yo-yo. It's been very, very odd. Um, at times, it's looked like almost that Lewis Hamilton is driving a different car. Um, at times, it looked like George Russell was super in control with what was happening. Um, obviously, we had the hydraulic issue. From what I read, uh, the hydraulic issue on day two was solved. They know what it was, and it was fixed, and they don't see it being an issue again. Uh, so that's what testing is for, finding these issues and fixing them. Incidentally, the uh, Aston Martin also had a hydraulic issue on day one, but we'll get on to that. Uh, but yeah, on day two, honestly, I, I was using words like horrific with how that car looked. Uh, not because of Paul Pussin, Paul Pussin is gone, but the rear end of that Mercedes just looked, it just looked so bad, especially with Lewis Hamilton at the wheel. And then into day three, we saw similar when Lewis Hamilton was running the harder tyres it just looked a massive handful at the rear. But then we saw a lot of action at the rear of that car, um, and then Lewis did some fairly fast runs. So I don't know if they got on top of that. Um, this is just my thoughts. Um, I think the W14 is a better-looking car as a platform, uh, and I think there's some positivity to be had for Mercedes fans. Um, but like I say, an up-and-down um, sort of testing for Mercedes, I think generally positive that they've made a step forward, but maybe to the disappointment of Mercedes fans, I don't think they've uh, closed the gap sufficiently to be fighting with the Red Bulls, at least early in the season. We'll see as the season goes on. Uh, Alpine, difficult one. Difficult one with Alpine. Um, now, they've apparently covered what they needed to cover uh, and things. I personally like to see a lot of laps done by a team in pre-season because I think that shows 
um, good reliability and whatnot moving forward through into the season. But maybe that's sort of the old side of me because, you know, back in the day, reliability was king um, and a lot of laps meant a successful car generally. And I'm talking years and years ago. Maybe it's less important now. I don't know. But, you know, reports are they got through the program that they wanted to get through for what it's worth the Alpine looked a very, very uh, stiff platform, um, m- not dissimilar from the Mercedes of last season. And I'm not saying porpoising or anything like that. It just looked, it looked very stiff over the bumps. It didn't look to have a great ride. It didn't look too compliant. Um, but they got a lot of pit stop practicing at the end of the uh, three days running. Uh, they just didn't get as many laps done as I personally would like to see from a team. But a lot of talk in the paddock is that they're the best of the rest between behind the big three. Um, we'll see into next week. I hope so. I've got a bit of a soft spot for Alpine, and I hope that um, Ocon and Gasly have got a good car and uh, they can move into next week and, and really show us what's what. McLaren next. McLaren have been played with issues of the wheel brows over the front wheels over the three days. Manufacturing error, and they've already said it can be fixed for next week. It is going to be fixed for next week. They already know what the issue is and are going to take steps and it's going to be sorted. But beyond that, it just hampered their um, laps all all week, really. Um, and I think I think most people that watched would agree that McLaren were largely underwhelming in in stuff that we saw from them. And I don't mean to knock them. It's just, you know, it's just what we saw um, with Lando Norris on the final day, not able to complete a race run or even a, a, a relatively fast run. I don't think he clocked up more than 10 laps in a row because of the issues that we saw with the uh, wheel brows i'm really hoping that they've still got some meaningful running in for them and they they collected data and they can move forward with that data and i'm hoping we see more performance next week uh for the race proper i'm just i am really worried i think out of all the teams i i'm, I'm most worried about mclaren uh with this pre-season uh it, it just from the outside it didn't look good on any level um um, apart from the fact, I suppose the car didn't break down, but it, it did hamper the running. It really did hamper the running. Um, yeah, and there was nothing to report. No- nothing gave me confidence. Um, but again, I hope they do well into the season. Alfa Romeo, Joe uh, had some good running, as did Bottas as well. Lots of laps. They on the th- was it the third day? It's all molded into one. They had a PU issue. I think that was day three morning. Uh, They had a PU issue which uh, hampered some running. But I think even despite that, Bottas got a good amount of laps in with like 73 laps. Um, Joe, a good amount of laps as well when he was running. Um, And I I think it was a very solid pre-season testing from Alfa Romeo what I will say is they appeared to be the only team genuinely porpoising which we'll see how they handle that moving into the season of course we saw lots of teams porpoising last season Ferrari probably the most notable that were porpoising but still extracted performance from the car so hopefully the PU issue can be fixed hopefully that's not something that affects Ferrari either going forward Um, and yeah I think it was a fairly solid preseason from Alfa Romeo. Um, They seem to be where they're normally at for me. Um, Yeah, we'll see going forward. What do you think? I'd love to know your opinions as well, guys. Please do share your thoughts on what you think. Aston Martin, for me... For me, they're the standout team of the um, of the preseason. Um, if you take away the big three, Aston Martin of the rest, they were the standout team. It looks it looks like Aston Martin have really produced a very good race car. Um, uh, Fernando Alonso and Drugovic on their f- on their relatively fast laps, it looked still a very calm drive, you know. I was trying to look at how the drivers were reacting to the cars, like the Alpine looked a handful, the Williams looked a handful when being pushed, but when Fernando and uh, Felipe were pushing the Aston Martin, um, for what it's worth, it, it looked like 
um, a solid drive, you know. And then late on, on day three, uh, Fernando Alonso was doing race runs and he did um, the fastest, longest um, um, medium run uh, that we saw. Uh, only comparable to Max Verstappen, who admittedly did it earlier in the three days and during the day session where you would expect it slower. Now, I'm not for a moment suggesting I expect uh, Aston Martin to be on par with Red Bull. That's not what I'm saying. But they are extremely encouraging signs if you're an Aston Martin fan. Um, And it, it just looked a strong package. It looked like they got through a lot of miles despite an early hydraulic um, issue on day one with Drugovic. Um, I think there's a ton of positivity with t- some pundits putting Aston Martin near Mercedes come next weekend. Um, honestly, I think Aston Martin have taken a huge step. Will they break into the top three? I'm doubtful, but I, I do think from testing... The long runs, the short runs, everything just looks positive out of there, and it looks a great car as well. Um, We'll see about that. Haas went about their work uh, diligently and strongly. They did very, very well. Um, I don't think there were any particular issues to report. They just got on with their program sensibly. Lots of laps completed. I don't really have much to say. This this kind of sums up Haas and their pre-season. They just sort of flew under the radar and did what they did. I, I, there wasn't there wasn't anything that I thought, oh, I'm impressed by that. But there wasn't anything that made me think, you know, like McLaren, oh, no. They just went about the work. I hope they've made a step. I hope most of the teams have made a step. It's a difficult one. But um, un- underwhelmed but sensible running from Haas? Maybe you guys differ. But there was nothing that set the world alight for me for Haas. But again, nothing particularly disappointing. Nothing nothing really to report. Some fast running from K-Mag on the final day. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Some pundits are rating them really highly. Uh, the same with Alpine. But out of both teams, there was nothing that I saw that made me feel that way, you know. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Alpha Tauri, a lot of laps, a lot of laps completed by uh, Sonoda and De Vries. I think it's a fairly strong, if um, somewhat inexperienced, in F1 pairing. Um, like I say, uh, and I said earlier in this, uh, a lot of laps to me signals a strong car uh, uh, and potentially good, uh, good form moving into the season. But th- there was nothing that showed... An amount of pace, nothing, nothing, nothing jumped out at me. The long run pace was on a par with other teams. Um, some some pundits putting them as the slowest team. I'm, I don't know if I'd agree. What I think we're gonna see, honestly, instead of super slow teams, I think we're just gonna see a, a, a tightening up of the midfield, um, where. You might have an Alpha Tauri at the back. You might have a Williams at the back. You might have a Haas at the back. It just depends. And I think that's what we might see going into next week, where instead of, you know, just, oh, they're at the back, it's just tighter. And and you could... I think the midfield battle this season is going to be really fun to watch. So don't just look at the front when you're watching Formula 1 this season. Do look at the mid-pack, because I think there's going to be some some excellent racing. But Alpha Tauri, lots of laps done, um, and, and looking decent, looking decent um, going into the season. Williams, again, l- so many laps done. 150 laps on day two, I think it was, for Logan Sargent. And I think... I'd, I think they'll have taken a step. I think I do think they'll have taken a step. And I, I how I would term that is, I'm hoping that they... It won't be a surprise and a yay, Williams, when they score a point or whatever. I think, I think they're going to score points more often this season. Uh, like I say, I think a general tightening of the mid-pack is going to happen this season. This is my big takeaway, I think, that... I, I, there's not there's not a team the only team I've worried about is McLaren but there's not a team I've looked at thinking they're miles off so mm, I'm just going to say I think there's a tightening of the midfield really good to see Williams doing lots of uh, good laps 
And yeah, there's nothing that jumps out that says they're slow, but also nothing that says they're going to be mega fast. I just think they're going to be closer to those that they're battling with, and I think they're going to have more chance of scoring points, if I'm if I'm honest. Now, at the end of the season, all of my forecasts could be completely wrong, so I'm just going to say I think that Aston Martin have made a jump. I think we're going to have Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, Aston Martin... And then the the rest, I think, are going to be super tight, and I'm a little worried about McLaren in the early part of the season. I really would love your input on this, guys. I, honestly, let me know in the comments what you think, what you disagree with, what you agree with, what I've just said. Um, but yeah, do let me know. Join me for the watch-alongs in the season. I'm going to be covering every session I possibly can with watch-alongs right here on the TSK F1 channel on YouTube. So please do subscribe, hit that like button, let me know what you think of the pre-season testing down in the comments, and please join me for the 9am news show um, every Monday to Friday. I'll see you very soon, guys. Take care.